Richard Sherman of the uh, 49ers, their cornerback, joining us on the program. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. Yourself? I'm doing okay. Uh, we've been on this topic here about uh, favorite cars that have been in movies and TVs. And then uh, I had I asked Michael Vick his first car. Do you remember your first car? Yeah. Yeah, I do. What was it? It was a Ford, uh, Ford Taurus. Taurus. Yeah. Um, an 88 Taurus. <laughs> Was it tricked out? How did that work out with the ladies? Well, you know, it got me around. <laughs> At that point, nobody had a car but me, so, you know, it worked out pretty well. Um, I was noticing, and I, I forgot about this, that you, did you go to Stanford as a wideout and then change to corner? Exactly. Okay, I'm curious, would you still be in the NFL if you were a wide receiver? Um, I probably would have got drafted higher, honestly. Really? Mm-hmm. Do you wish you would have stayed at wide receiver? Any time you ever thought about, man, it's so easy now to be able to catch passes? Well, no, I haven't thought about it, honestly. It worked out pretty well for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but I'm waiting for a rule to help the defensive players. If, if you were going to talk to the commissioner and said, hey, can we have this, what would this be? Um, it, it Honestly... They're, they would never do that, but I, I just want less rules for the, that help the offense. Honestly, that that would help us tremendously. Like if if you didn't have five rules that could affect a defensive player and give an automatic first down on plays of third and eighty, it could be third and eighty, and you get a, a running. I mean, a receiver runs into a DB and they call illegal contact. That's the automatic first down, and the drive continues. So I honestly, I would say. Just take away, you know, or just make five-yard penalties, five-yard penalties instead of automatic first down. If I was a defensive back, I would probably hold on every play because I don't, and I, I don't know if this was your philosophy in Seattle, but it felt like you guys were going to be physical and probably said they're not going to call everything. What is your is your philosophy any different than it was when you played in Seattle? My my philosophy was never hold every play. Um, and, and play to the best of your abilities. It is what it is. You know, they can call a flag on every play for anything you know they could say hey you you touched the receiver past five yards so you can call illegal contact on every play if, if the receiver in the corner touch so i mean you just can't worry about those things when you're playing you know you just got to play as fast as you can as hard as you can and let the chips fall we spent a lot of time on yesterday's show talking about the ncaa and uh, lebron leading the charge with the governor of california gavin newsom that uh, let's let's change this the pay for play uh your thoughts on uh what what is the rule that should be in place with this? Are you fine with what they're proposing? Well, I'm I'm fine with what they're proposing with with some you know more to it. Because um, honestly, I, I get frustrated. And one of my teammates brought this up the other day. Um, you know what's the what's the annual cost of college tuition? You you'd say um, I don't know. It's depending on if it's state school or private u university. It's probably twenty grand or so. You know, forty for the super expensive ones. I think Stanford might be at the top at like 60. So what's what what's the salary for, for a minimum wage worker in the U.S. right now? I think in Washington, minimum wage is 15 bucks. Yeah. So it's probably around 45 grand or so, give or take. Yeah. So the, the amount of hours these kids work every day, is, it probably exceeds 40 hours most of the time. But if you just paid them a salary for the hours that they work, they make more than their scholarships every year just off the strength. Like if you just paid them paid them a salary based not not anything crazy, not, you know, eighty hour eighty dollars an hour. If you paid them twenty bucks an hour, they would literally make more money just with the same amount of hours that they're working, nothing changed than their scholarship is worth. Some of these state schools, I mean the scholarship's only worth fourteen to ten, fourteen thousand dollars. So you're saying these guys are working all these hours all year long and their scholarships ten thousand annually, so that's forty thousand over four years. So you're saying forty thousand for for whatever amount of hours these guys put in. That's pretty ridiculous, and and that's what I get frustrated about. I get frustrated about the conversation about amateurism when you you know they make a huge case that these kids are amateurs, but these coaches are professionals, and that's always odd to me. It's like how, how can you how can you have professional coaches and amateur kids? You know, some of these coaches are making more than than NFL coaches. 
Yeah, because they don't have to pay the players, so they have to pay somebody. They pay the coaches, and you got assistant coaches who are getting you know more than assistant coaches in the NFL. But how would you have marketed yourself and your likeness at Stanford to get paid? Um, I, I mean, it, it just depends on what opportunities. I honestly don't know. I mean, there's there's a ton. There's not a ton of uh, um, like. People aren't aren't as crazy about football at Stanford. I mean, in Palo Alto, as, as you know, you know, <laughs> not the football capital. But um, I think with some kids, it'll change their decision making in general. Like it'll change how they they even approach looking at schools. Because if you can go to a school like USC or Ohio State or Michigan, where you know the town is crazy about football, and get a scholarship and really, you know, be able to 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 be marketed by these businesses and these uh and these used car salesmen or, or lots or whatever the case may be, then I think that'll make it more attractive for some of these kids to to, to select those universities over the universities they would normally select. Um and it it honestly make more parity because instead of, you know, five five stars going to the same school, they'd honestly go to a different school because they'd be more marketable and make more money if they went somewhere else. Would you have gone to a different school under these guidelines? No. No, I would have went to Stanford. Uh, you know, the decision to go to Stanford wasn't about any of that. It was about the long-term effects um, and, and the value of the, the, the degree. And I'm also wondering about this, Richard. Like, let, let's say Zion Williamson went to Duke, and even though they're Nike school, he says, I'll go there, but I want my own shoe. But it's going to be a Nike shoe, but I want you to pay me a million dollars. You know, I'm going to be on national TV 35 times, 35 games. Can you see something like that happen? I mean, I know there are not many Zion Williamsons, but it feels like every once in a while we get one of those players who's transcendent. Right. I mean, you you do. But I, I think a lot of those players are, especially in terms of basketball, where, where a lot of the, the shoe money is, are are doing their best to avoid going to college in general. You know, I mean, Zion did, but some of them are just going overseas and taking their talent to, to Australia or the European circuit and playing there because they don't want to waste their time in college and, and, and waste the energy and, and give the NCAA any money. Um, and I respect that. But I could definitely see, you know, if another transcendent talent like Zion Williamson came through the college ranks, him getting a, a, a crazy deal to come to one of those schools. And, and that'd be good for him. That'd be good for him. That'd be good for for everybody because with right as it stands right now the school will just get that money you know if yeah. if they just get the transcended talent then whatever endorsement deals jersey sales etc cetera, etc cetera, that he would have gotten you know just from putting his face on the cover of a magazine or or the cover of of a cup or or or, or a bottle or whatever the case may be the school profits off of all that and the kid just gets the scholarship Got the Browns coming to town. What's your relationship with uh, Odell Beckham? Oh, we're we're, we're friends. Um, you know, he's a great great guy. I've known him since he was he was pretty young. Um, you know, it's, he gets a lot of attention, but he's 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 a great guy and he's a great football player. But is it is it harder to play against somebody you like? No, no, it's not harder at all. You know, you still you still got a job to do. Um, and my job is to, to keep him from catching the football. So it doesn't matter. You know, after the game, we'll still be friends. Before the game, we're friends. Um, but, you know, as competitors, we both understand what, what it comes with. What are you doing when your career is over? Uh, that, that's a great question. I haven't I haven't totally decided that. Um, I'm working on that right as we speak. You know, I think i got four more years left I want to play, but I think um, commenting, commentating is an option and um, – think you know maybe maybe coaching if the right position presents itself um but honestly i haven't decided i think i i, I want to talk the game more than i want to coach it yeah well you got hot takes and that's what it seems like the business is nowadays that you got to have something to say and you got to say it and there's smart takes too which which is also sure. rare in our business i appreciate that well i'm always happy to, to, to come on your show um and be a guest i appreciate you having me richard uh, good luck against the, the browns and the rest of the season we appreciate your time thank you Thank you. That's uh, Richard Sherman. He turns uh, 31 in March, so he wants to play four more years. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV. Stream for free on BR Live or download the Dan Patrick Show app.